I'm sure a lot of people remember someone they used to play a game with all the time when they were younger, just to fall out of touch at complete random, and thinking nothing of it for a while. Brandon Works is a YouTube channel run by a user named Ozalog, about his friend Brandon who stopped coming online one day. They once had a shared Roblox account named Number369, which Brandon developed many games on. Confused and worried about the situation, Ozalog starts looking back on these places, initially to reminisce on past memories with his friend Brandon, who he doesn't get to talk to anymore, and he ends up finding more than he was looking for. I made a video about this YouTube channel last year, though it is now outdated and has since been hidden from my channel. There are 19 videos on the Brandon Works channel, uploaded over the span of two years, and let's start with the first, intro. The first video on the channel is a 2 minute long video giving us a bit of context, informing us on the purpose of the channel. Ozolog met his friend Brandon in late 2008, they made games together on a shared account throughout 2009, until Brandon stopped coming online one day in November of that year. On this account, Brandon was working on a place by himself called My House Place, a sort of recreation of his own house in real life using the Roblox Happy Home Starter Place as a base. Stuff like this was pretty common back in the day, a few examples I can think of, or Polyhex's house place, and JJ5x5's house, both of which were made in the late 2000s and early 2010s. Ozolog has seen little to nothing of this place that Brandon made, and it was mostly a personal project to Brandon. This video also sets up the setting for the series we are currently in the last few weeks of 2009. They still had square studs, and the most popular game was Heli Wars, where Ozolog met Brandon in the first place. In the end of the video, Ozolog shows off the very first version of the My House Place game. It's very bare bones, almost being a completely unmodified starter place. Let's continue. Ozolog jumps ahead to the second version of the House Place from February 2009, and there are some slight changes. This is just under a year after Brandon made his Roblox account, and firstly, a free model alphabet set has been used to make a sign indicating the version number, and separating the building blocks area from the house with a sign labeled Toys. The house has been recolored, and trees have been duplicated and moved around. Inside the house, a free model of a TV with a shiny remote emitting particles. Next to it is a hint that says don't touch too much. Interesting. This part is the very start of a prominent theme throughout the whole series, which if it were a standalone occurrence, may have been chalked up to a sort of random joke. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. It's mentioned here that yellow, the worst color, is Brandon's favorite color, which is why we see it so much in the early episodes. The house is not finished yet, and it's abundantly clear that Brandon is not a good builder at this point in time. Not only is he a new player, but certain parts of the map are unanchored and can be moved by the player. Brandon forgets to remove the unused parts of templates he took from the free asset toolbox. The short video is over, and I should mention now that besides walking sound effects, these videos are completely silent for the most part. Shortly after, Ozolog uploaded a 6 minute video named My House Place version 3. The title card tells us this is 5 days newer, and the video is significantly longer than the ones before it. Clearly a lot has happened. Within a few seconds of starting the recording, Ozolog notices a giant mansion asset just out of reach from the player. It's floating in the void and is much much nicer than the tiny yellow house Brandon lives in. The majority of the video seems to be Ozolog playing with the weapons and tools that Brandon puts out in the toy section this update. When Ozolog walks towards the house, he notices Brandon's NPC has animated dialogue. There's new furniture such as an arcade machine and a boombox. The TV is now suddenly off and it is above a campfire. There's another NPC of Brandon's character in front of his room and it also has animated dialogue. This door goes to my room, so keep out. Just kidding. You can look around, just don't touch anything. You really don't want to touch those light bins because they break joints. Very strange, and light bins are an object that haven't been yet mentioned in the series. When walking into Brandon's room, he messes with some of the weapon free models before touching the light bins, which Brandon told him not to do shortly before. It removes Ozolog's legs, which leaves him confused. The light bins are basket-shaped white boxes. After the light bins take his legs off, Ozolog jumps out the window and notices an out-of-view TV blocked by the back wall of the house. Another very strange oddity. This is where the video ends. These light bins are very important to the story, though they don't make any sense just yet. We'll keep going for now and we'll put two and two together later. 
A video covering version 4 of the house place is notably missing, which Ozalog says is because it wasn't interesting. Version 5 is from early March and features quite a lot of new changes. Brandon is getting slightly better at building, but still forgets to anchor some things and relies on free assets from the toolbox. The watermark at the bottom of the screen from a free asset and the bouncy castle model are good examples of this. If you've been playing Roblox for long enough, you've seen this many times before. There's now a second story to the house and the kitchen is in the very front, next to the doorway. There's another NPC of Brandon's avatar with dialogue saying, Don't forget to scream and shout, let it all out. We see Brandon's mom cooking something and not saying anything. There are many more light bins than we saw last time we saw the house, though we still have no idea exactly what they do, and Ozalog definitely doesn't either. Brandon doesn't explain it, and just tells us not to touch it. In front of Brandon's room is another NPC of Brandon's avatar saying, Definitely perfect for sundowning now. Have fun. Which is very odd. Ozalog enters Brandon's new room, which is much larger and has much more furniture. Along with the computer, bed, and dresser, we see two light bins close to each other, a cross, and a TV with Veggie Tales on it. I joked about Veggie Tales being on the TV in my original video talking about this channel, which I probably shouldn't have ignored as much as I did. Brandon is very obviously religious, from him watching the Christian show Veggie Tales, to the crosses in every room of the house, to the actual account that uses Brandon's username, featuring a once popular copy pasta about loving God in the bio, though it has been edited to say God's sons, instead of just Jesus Christ. This is just an observation, but it will be important later. This also tells us that Brandon's religious views might differ from the traditional Christian ideals. When we go upstairs, we can see who we only can assume to be Brandon's father sitting on the couch in a white tank top, angrily screaming at a blank TV that has already been turned off. Just ever so slightly hidden away is a shotgun, very close to Brandon's dad's reach. It's unknown why he's mad yet, but this is already a very concerning scene. Brandon's mom is now sitting alone on her bed, with a light bin just next to her saying nothing. We never see her say anything. Ozalog pays almost no mind to anything going on, and just sees everything in this place as cool free models to have fun with. The video concludes shortly after. It's at this point in the series that it's more apparent than ever before that something is definitely wrong. I find it very disturbing that while these free model weapons of master swords and explosives are scattered throughout the toys area in Brandon's room as decoration, Brandon's dad has easy access to a shotgun, something much realer and darker than anything we've seen previously, something that we can't just perceive as some toy free model, that is a part of the house. We'll get back to this later. Moving on, we have two videos showing extra places unrelated to the house place that Brandon worked on in April 2009. First is an obstacle course game addressed to a user named BKinger12. Supposedly, it was a Valentine's Day gift, as Brandon was online dating another Roblox user. Ozalog claims that Brandon snapped out of it very quickly. The obby is very far from finished and barely works, spawning the player in the completely wrong area. One thing Ozalog notices is a bug that causes Brandon's dialogue NPCs to lose their limbs, which may just be a glitch or something more sinister but we don't know yet. The second is a Capture the Flag style fighting map that takes place at night, which was a collaboration project between Ozalog and Brandon, last updated in the final days of April. It's far from finished a dark and sparse map with two poorly constructed grey brick bases and four trees near the center of the map. The only weapon, which has a misspelled name by the way, is broken entirely. It's worth mentioning that the sword doesn't use the default Shedletsky sword animations, and instead uses custom animations that even Ozalog knows look more like punching. Near one of the spawns is a green brick, seemingly placed there for no reason. While this may seem like another side effect of how poorly built this place is, Brandon placing green bricks in his places wouldn't be a one-time occurrence, and it starts here. Version 6 and 7 are missing. The next video after the two unrelated game tours is a tour of version 8 of my house place. This was only made a few days later. First, the fence to the toys section is cut off entirely. The version indicator, which we've completely ignored and you may have forgotten existed, is stuck on 6 still. It's very subtle, but the time of day seems to be slightly later. While not exactly dusk, the clouds are darker than before. Things are moved around, and again, Brandon's torso is missing, just like in the obby video we saw before. 
We also notice there are multiple shotguns in the house now, one right in front of Brandon's room. Upon walking into Brandon's room, Ozolog notices that the green brick from the Capture the Flag place is here again. A hint above it reads, green keeps the place clean. Ozolog is confused but chalks it up to an unfinished regeneration button, a common feature in old Roblox models like vehicles and buildings. There are a bit more weapons and pieces of furniture in Brandon's room, and there's now a hole in the wall that Ozolog calls weird. When going upstairs, Ozolog notices that the door to Brandon's mom's room is locked. She wasn't downstairs cooking like she was when we saw her last. It's possible that Brandon's mother has left. Again, Brandon's dad is seen screaming at the TV. This time, it looks more like a scream of terror than a scream of rage based on how it's typed. Immediately, when touching the remote by complete accident, Ozolog is teleported to a wooden outhouse in the forest, and a cutoff message appears. You touch too much. You're in the dirt room for one hour. Ozolog tries to get out, fails, and then ends the video. The outhouse keeps the player locked in for an actual hour, according to the small fragment of a script that Ozolog shared via a low-quality screenshot. It's clear by now that Brandon's dad has been very abusive. Huge punishments for small things like touching a remote being a huge example of this. Christians often wear crosses on necklaces as something to protect themselves from harm, and Brandon's family has been putting more and more crosses in every room as time goes on. Light bins are likely advertised to the family as symbols of purity, meant to protect the family from harm in a similar nature, and the father has been putting more and more of these around the house. Whatever is scaring the father this bad is completely unknown, however. We should keep in mind that we are experiencing these changes in Brandon's family through his point of view, and Brandon is just a kid who likes to play Roblox, he doesn't fully understand what's going on. A good example of this is when he doesn't even explain what the light bins or green buttons do, other than very basic and vague descriptions like keeping things clean, which is most likely what his father has been telling him. Chair Brick Battle is another miscellaneous place that Ozolog stumbled upon from mid-2009. He was the one that mostly developed it, with a few strange additions to the map made by Brandon. It seems to be a mostly normal, albeit completely broken, Brick Battle map that takes place at night. The map, according to its main developer, is trying to be random. All Brandon seemed to have added were power objects, he called them, aka the light bins and green bricks, which were made to keep the place clean, and a tower that an NPC of Brandon his avatar sits upon. After pushing the NPC off the tower, a faceless NPC called a citizen with Brandon's avatar spawns, roaming the map at random, going in no particular direction. That's really about it for this place. Everything is weird about this place, and not a lot of it seems to make any sense. Both Ozolog and Brandon's contributions are odd for very different reasons. Buckle up for this next one because version 13 is by far the weirdest video we've seen yet. Ozolog has skipped versions 9 through 12 because they were apparently too laggy to record on. This is nearly a month newer than the previous versions we saw, last being updated on the 25th of May 2009. We immediately notice that NPC health bars have glitched out badly. They extend forever to the right. It should also be mentioned that in older Roblox games, the name tags of NPCs were often used to communicate dialogue, which is what we've seen this entire time throughout almost all of the videos. The main new feature is a dream world that can be accessed via a teleportation pad in Brandon's room. Ozolog is teleported and finds himself in a beach type area with a small house, all crowded with shadowy figures. The middle of this area has a giant pit. When jumping down to the bottom, Ozolog finds one of those light bins and a sparkling angel sitting next to it, happy to see him. The angel says, another sundowner here to help. The light bin says it has captured light. When entering Brandon's room, Ozolog saw a shadow figure which had escaped from the dream world wandering around Brandon's room. Whether this was an intentional design choice in the house place, or an overlooked bug caused by the figure accidentally walking on the teleport pad is unknown. We get confirmation that Brandon's mom has left the family and left the kid with his father when the health bar glitch shows us the location of any dialogue no matter how far away, and there is nothing behind the locked door of Brandon's mom's room. When walking outside, we see that the version indicator is much closer to the house, and it still reads 6. If it was modified, dragged closer to the house, Brandon would have noticed this mistake. This was definitely on purpose. Let's talk about this.
After this video is a long break in uploads, in 2022, the series started to gain some more traction, and theories began to arise. The most commonly accepted one is that Brandon is not only abused by his father, but his father is being indoctrinated into what many have described as a doomsday-like cult by televangelist broadcasts, and it is rapidly affecting Brandon and his mother. Brandon's father has been buying products like the light bin as a result of fear-mongering, and Brandon's father almost certainly believes there will be a judgment day of sorts soon. This is likely what the light bins and green buttons are for, keeping the house pure and clean. And these broadcasts that are scaring Brandon's dad could be fear-mongering to get these families to buy products that they think will please some sort of god. Due to his controlling nature, it's theorized that his father likely made this hole in the wall and has been monitoring his behavior closer than ever. I personally believe that sundowning or sundowners are terms used in reference to the religious beliefs that Brandon's dad has, not directly in reference to sundowner syndrome. The condition found most commonly in Alzheimer's patients that causes confusion and feelings of anxiousness later in the day. The first dream sequence almost certainly depicts Brandon taking his life, where he meets the angel, happy that that another sundowner has come down there to help them, meaning he's not alone in doing this. It's genuinely heartbreaking noticing these serious themes of slow indoctrination into a cult and potential abuse from his father through the lens of poorly built Roblox places that document Brandon's life as it goes on. Before we get into this next section of the video, I want to talk about one video that comes after the House Place version 13 tour and an unlisted video that was uploaded a year later. Both of these show supposed unfinished or otherwise unrelated video recordings that feature Ozolog and Brandon, as well as other friends of theirs such as familiar names like B King or 12. The first video is Roblox Gone Mad, a clone of a JJ Favix 5 video series that ran from 2007 to 2010 called Roblox Gone Crazy. Gone Crazy was an influential video series of short comedic Roblox bloopers that won the user JJ5x5A contest and his own hat back in 2007. The video primarily takes place in JJ5x5's place, Thrillville, much like the actual Roblox Gone Crazy from 2007. There's not much to say about this video other than the small snippets of Brandon talking in the Roblox chat. The conversations, which are hard to read due to the video's low quality, mostly consist of them organizing different skits and directing the video. There are a few interesting parts such as Brandon getting mad at one of his friends for saying the word crap, which is such an inoffensive word that didn't even get picked up by the automatic Roblox chat filter. In this video, we also have another piece of dialogue when after Brandon mentions his house place, which was still in development by this time, he says he put so much work and that it was really personal to him. In the same conversation, Brandon compares a gun he sees in game to his dad's shotgun that he owns in real life which is apparently next to the TV in his real-life house. I was right. The second video is an unlisted 7-minute compilation video called Two More Old Unfinished Vids, which contains footage from the 26th of July, 2009, which is in the short time span between House Place version 13 in May and Brandon disappearing from Roblox in November. The first recording in the compilation is Brandon, Ozolog, a few of their friends, and other unknown users playing a build game called Ultimate Build, a popular Roblox game created back in in 2008. Brandon's strange habits that we saw in some of the later house place versions carries over into these recordings, and you can see Brandon making sure that each one of his friend's builds have their own crosses and green buttons, like charms to purify the structures. While everyone in the server was building cranes and cannons, Brandon was building large towers with crosses on them, only saying the word clean in all lowercase when asked what he was doing, and the other people that knew him before have to try and justify it by saying oh, he does stuff like that all the time. At the end, he leaves the building contest they were having because his dad was calling. The other clip is a short recording from August of Brandon and Ozolog playing Heli Wars with Windows Movie Maker effects plastered onto it, which is why it's sped up and the video randomly spins around and stuff similar to that. And it's added simply to lighten the mood. After the long break in uploads that came after the Roblox Gone Mad upload in 2021, an update was released on the Brandon Works channel to everyone's surprise. This 4 minute video is the darkest so far by a long shot, as it tells us that anything that could have taken a turn for the worse definitely has. Firstly, Ozolog apologizes for his absence and thanks everyone for their continued interest. The version Ozolog is showing is the 19th version from the 14th of July 2009, just 12 
days before the ultimate build footage we saw earlier. The first major difference is that very obviously, it is now nighttime. We no longer spawn outside and there are little to no windows to the outside. The version indicator is now on the wall and is now the quote, joining the downing slash raising slash safety countdown. It reads 4. This is likely what the giant 6 that kept creeping closer to the house meant. In early versions, Ozalog noticed that Brandon would use the default symbol seen on players spawn objects on different things like rugs and that is seen a lot here. When walking upstairs, Ozalog finds Brandon's dad sitting at his TV. It says he is ready and Ozalog reads this and carries on. There are many crosses on each wall. Brandon's dream from version 13 has been updated and is now completely white. Brandon calls it exciting and it seems to be much more positive, if you can call it that. Monochromatic dance floors, slides, and bouncy castles. The pit is blocked off and the shadow figures are replaced by completely white NPCs called good, which are likely representing angels. By the pit being blocked off now, we can tell this is after the previous dream scene in the version 13 video. When exiting, Ozalog mentions that he started becoming worried and taking Brandon's situation more seriously. Not after seeing everything else, but after seeing this poster with a set of rules and guidelines for quote, being a good downer. The dark and grainy video quality along with the skewing that comes from a Roblox decal being placed on a brick makes the poster hard to read, but it has been transcribed before. Yes, TV stays on with authorized DVDs. House stays protected with light and cleaning. Check in with crosses every night. Track personal raising progress however seen fit. No, no touching TV remote without written permission, no unauthorized persons into home, no outside playtime during final countdown quarter, and no premature downing before designated month. Shortly after this, Ozalog looks at one more version of the house place which isn't much different, the only noticeable difference being that the countdown now reads 2. The torso and limbs of the Brandon NPCs have disappeared, which I personally believe could be symbolic of the deterioration of Brandon's physical health during this time, considering he's almost never let outside from what it seems. In November, shortly before Brandon disappeared, the house was suddenly reverted back to default. The poster we saw earlier tells us that Brandon's dad has been completely isolated Brandon from the outside world, besides Roblox and whatever he was allowed to see. No unauthorized people entering the home and the TV only playing authorized DVDs. Brandon likely has to lie to his father about what Roblox is really like, so he can even communicate with his friends, telling his friends to stay cautionary when saying things like crap or not having those green bricks in their builds. The word downing itself is most likely referring to suicide, which is harrowing to think about after remembering that Brandon said his room was perfect for sundowning not too long ago. The abusive dynamic between Brandon and his father is much more psychological than physical, and even if Brandon were to get out of this situation alive, it would impact him for the rest of his remaining life. One thing that piqued my interest specifically in this video is the mention of sun rising or raising, which I am unsure about myself. At the end of the update video, Ozalog shares a screenshot of a private message he received through YouTube, talking about how these videos had supposedly become quite popular in the Roblox community throughout 2010. The message later states that Brandon had run away from home and was living somewhere else in the same area. Now, we have gone over 12 videos and have 7 more to go. Seven months have gone by since the update video was uploaded, and a video is uploaded to the Brandon Works channel named First Meeting. Through a series of title cards, Ozalog expresses extreme excitement over getting in contact with Brandon again. He had supposedly lost his password after running away and had to make a new account and was able to arrange a meeting with him in-game. Time has definitely passed. The first videos took place throughout the year 2010, and through the interface of the Roblox client alone, we can tell that years have passed. These seem to have been taken sometime in March of 2012, roughly a year and a half later. After some excited waiting, Ozalog finally sees that Brandon has joined the game using his new account, CoolBrandon687. Brandon opts out of answering any personal questions about what had happened to him previously for now, and instead wants to be given a tour of the server and its builds. Shortly after this, Ozalog shows a timeline 
time-lapse of them walking around for a bit and talking. Ozalog mentions that one of their friends, Spartan862, couldn't make it as he now had a part-time job, meaning they were much farther into their teenage years by this point in time, further meaning they were likely 11 to 14 years old in the original 2009 and 2010 video clips. Right away, I noticed that Brandon spoke very differently, saying he used capital letters when typing, that he was using proper grammar now despite the abundance of grammatical errors in his messages, and relatively quickly, Brandon says he needs to go and that he'll be back at the same time tomorrow. Things are looking good for now. Ozalog mentions that while he's still confused, he's relieved to know that Brandon is doing okay. Brandon is almost entirely off the grid besides this Roblox account and if anything were to happen, they would have no further contact with Brandon no confirmation of anything. Next is a 9.5 minute video named Questions which was released the day after. Sony and Ozalog prepared a stage for Brandon to answer all of his questions. This same stage was seen in a much earlier video, supposedly recorded in May 2009, the unfinished Roblox Gone Mad. First, Ozalog asks Brandon where he was when he was offline. He states that he ran away because of his dad's beliefs and that he quote grounded him really badly and said that his aunt took care of him for a while. Brandon seems to not remember remember a lot of the things the two bonded over and doesn't remember certain in-jokes from only a year or two prior, such as a secret phrase. Ozalog starts asking Brandon a few more specific questions pertaining to the dirt room, strange dreams, and the rules poster we'd seen in previous videos. Brandon seems to not remember these and comes up with very vague and basic answers when more clarification is added. Randomly, Brandon starts going inactive for spans of nearly 20-30 to 30 seconds at a time just to write short, vague answers to very specific questions. When asked about the dirt room punishment, Brandon says another thing dad made me do after nearly 30 seconds of silence. Ozalog starts to get more and more aggressive saying that's it, and in response Brandon says, look what do you want me to say, it was messed up stuff, you're being kind of weird right now. Ozalog starts talking back saying, oh I'm the weird one? What's weird is not being able to answer basic questions properly. Sony, their friend, who has been silent the whole interview, is clearly uncomfortable judging by his very small interactions with the two during the altercation. Brandon says Ozalog is not listening and Ozalog asks Brandon one last question, one that only Brandon would remember. This shows Ozalog has a very clear distrust in Brandon, believing it may not even be him. Ozalog gives Brandon full permission to say Ozalog's last name in front of both the YouTube audience and Sony and then goes inactive. After 30 seconds of waiting for a response, Ozalog unfriends Brandon and says he's seen enough before leaving the game. A day after the questions video, Ozalog uploaded another video titled Explanation. Through title cards, he explains that Brandon begged Ozalog for another chance through private messages after he unfriended him. Ozalog sends a couple aggressive messages calling him a liar and sets down a singular chair for Brandon to sit in when he joins the game. When he joins, Ozalog says, oh, speak of the devil. Interesting choice of words to use when you're talking about someone like Brandon. Brandon sits down and says, I wasn't trying to troll you or anything dude, I was just trying to make you feel better. I just wanted you to get over Brandon. The person in the chair admits to being one of their friends, Spartan862, who said he couldn't make it to the initial meeting because of his quote, part-time job. The two argue with Ozalog saying YouTube is gonna know that Spartan lies to his friends and Spartan calling Ozalog obsessed over Brandon, someone who quit Roblox and will never come back. This is despite the fact that Spartan watched at least some of the house place tour videos, which had very obvious clues that Brandon's life was falling apart. The argument starts to get worse, with Spartan and Ozalog saying they won't be friends with each other anymore after such a huge lie about Ozalog's best friend until something completely unexpected happens. The real Brandon 6875935 account joins the game. This is the account that Brandon used as his real main account, aside from the shared number 369 account that the house places were on. He talks through the safe chat menu which only gives him select prompts. This is a now deleted feature that existed from 2007 to 2014 for users under 13 or guests that would only give the player a few hundred preset basic chat prompts, similar to games like Animal Jam that did the same thing. Spartan accused him of being hacked and Brandon gets the words, Dad, kind of mad, me, okay, out, before saying, I have to go, please forgive me, which is not a prompt in the safe chat. 
After he leaves, Spartan and Ozalog sit there for a few seconds, exchanging only two messages about the ordeal. Spartan says, I don't know if that was real, and Brandon responds with, I don't even know anymore. Through the messages Brandon was able to get out while he was still in the game, we figure out that Brandon has been with his father this whole time. He didn't run away, and his aunt never took care of him. There are four more videos left on the channel. New Place Brandon has created a new place on his account using the stamper tool. Instead of a house this time, however, it's a castle with other buildings and strange structures surrounding it. Ozilog promises in the start to never include his friends again, despite not only many of them being close to Brandon, but some of them did absolutely nothing wrong in this situation. He just doesn't trust them anymore. Yeah, Ozilog is now the viral Roblox guy with the channel dissecting his friend's damaged home life for clues, but it's not like he was Brandon's only friend. This isn't about Ozilog. Now that maintaining this channel of basically Roblox vlogs is a part of the equation, Ozilog starts putting more time into that than making sure that Brandon is okay. Despite using preset blocks from the stamper tool, Brandon still has unanchored parts in his builds. At this point, it feels like it's on purpose. He's now developed a weird habit of looking into every building as if it's some sort of clue to this weird mystery, though the majority of these buildings probably mean absolutely nothing. The theories that Ozalog brings up in this MS Paint slideshow at the end are very big stretches, including a horse stable being present in the castle signifying an unstable home, and a UFO asset in the stamper tool being placed down, meaning that Brandon believes in aliens. When falling out of the map, Ozolog notices the letters OCT carved into the ground. He theorizes that it means Ozo come today. The thing is, this letter combination was not put here on purpose. Ozolog is just looking at the layout of the map from below. The T is the starting path, the C is the layout of the castle, and the O is just the mode of water. Theorizing about these three letters in the first place is completely pointless. Ozolog says his Ozo come today theory is right because the game was coincidentally updated a week later. In a follow-up video named Week 2, Ozalog looks at all the new additions and tries to come up with theories on what it could all mean. The castle has a bunch of new additions, though it's really messy. All of the vehicles outside are completely broken and can't move. TVs don't work, and a prison-like building and cop car are now outside of the castle. As well, the prison-like building has an X in the incomplete ceiling. There are other buildings like a red room with a disco ball and float pads, which don't work. What's especially saddening about this video is the title card at the very end that Ozalog leaves in, in case Brandon sees the video. Brandon, if you're seeing this, I hear your message loud and clear. Even if you don't reply to mine, I want to help. That's where the video ends. It's also worth taking into account that Brandon's traumatic home life is now apparently this huge mystery in the Roblox community that all these people are invested in, which doesn't help in any way. Suddenly, four days later, a video is uploaded named, More Updates Already? Ozilog didn't realize, but the game suddenly started receiving daily updates. It starts with the title card saying the video needs to get out quick. In each of the last three days, Ozilog has been recording videos and hasn't had the time to analyze them for clues. Day 1. The castle has been renovated and many of the unanchored parts are fixed. New paintings and decor are added, though the UFO is gone. New rooms with a party area and lounge are added. Parking spaces are added in the area that was initially thought to be a prison as well as computers. One of the strangest is a giant mountain that Brandon built with nothing at the top. The new updates just seem to be more and more additions to the increasingly messy castle, which most likely mean nothing. On the first day, a message is written that reads, King Soon. On the second, another new message is written that says last week party. A tower, kind of similar to the towers Brandon would build in Ultimate Build, is now on the mountain. Day 3. An extra sign is added to the last week party banner, which reads, then clean. After exploring some of the new structures, Ozalog finds a sign that says, meeting goods soon. The goods are in reference to the angel-like beings we saw roaming around Brandon's dreams on a few different occasions. Ozalog thinks this means Brandon is saying he'll arrange a proper meeting with him, with the logic behind it being that he was a good friend of Brandon's. He doesn't realize what this truly means. Ozalog immediately assuming that the phrase, meeting the goods, is talking about himself is yet another piece of evidence that over time, Ozolog has become increasingly narcissistic. Three days later, when the so-called last week party finished, Ozolog uploaded a video simply titled Dot. The description reads, 
No words. Only a few seconds in, we realize that everything from the last castle build is now gone. The first thing Ozalog notices upon entering the game is that his clothes are simply black, other than his hat. It's common tradition to wear nothing but black attire at funerals. In front of Ozalog is an open structure with the two good NPCs roaming around, and a branded NPC with pre-written dialogue options. The initial dialogue reads, Last update, because I'll finally be with other goods when you see this. I got to the high level for next life with the last rays. Ozalog clicks his only response option. Where will you go? Brandon wrote, It's a secret, but you could say it's like paradise. Wanna learn and even join me someday? Check the website. The website link is blurred out, and capitalized red font below it reads, I'm not letting anyone else fall into that link. The only response option is, When will you be online? Brandon wrote, Well, not any time you'll be able to see, but if any friends still want to chat, you can talk to my other NPC. He goes on to say that he left everyone behind because the first life doesn't have the right power, and that Ozalog can quote, learn too. Thanks to all my friends on here, and please don't be sad about this, because it's the best for me. See you on the other side, I hope. Goodbye. In the footage, Ozalog sits for a few seconds reading, before turning around slowly and walking towards another NPC of Brandon's avatar with pre-packaged responses. Let's chat. How are you feeling? Ozalog immediately goes for the feeling bad option. Sorry, what's going on? Ozalog goes for the something online option. Brandon responds with a prompt about ignoring trolls. Ozalog goes through the options again, clicking something IRL instead. Brandon responds with something very similar. Ozalog goes through the feeling good options. When Ozalog is asked what game he's been playing recently, he says Heli Wars, the game they met on four years earlier. Brandon had a pre-written response dedicated to Ozalog for this exact option. Ozo, is that you? LOL, it must be. Hope you still get out there and pwn. So much fun. Ozalog sits for a while, and then writes in the chat to express his feelings. That is the end of Brandon Works. Honestly, it's unclear what truly happened to Brandon in that two and a half year gap between disappearing in November 2009 and reappearing very shortly in March 2012. Brandon was most likely fully indoctrinated at this point and came back to Roblox to try and recruit more members, including his own friends. In the final video, we could see Ozalog blur out a link to a website the cult owns with a sense of urgency to it. The part of the last week party sign that reads then clean is also something that I should point out. In the final version of the house place, it gets reset to the clean default house template. This is despite the version before it being a dark, messy house with countdowns, light bins, green buttons, and crosses everywhere. The sign that read king soon in the very first update could be referring to meeting some sort of god, calling him a king. It could also be referring to a second coming of sorts. The term raising is still something I don't fully understand myself, though it could literally mean raising to heaven, with the last raise mentioned in Brandon's final message meaning his death. The raising progress mentioned earlier on in the series could mean some sort of other sacrifice, though it's not totally clear. As well, the Roblox accounts mentioned in the series all do really exist on the Roblox platform. All of them were made while the web series was going on in 2021, besides 2-in-1 recording which just so happened to be the real names of accounts that registered in 2009. One thing that I noticed about Brandon's account was that it initially had his original avatar seen in the early videos equipped, but when the series ended, the clothes turned completely black, just like in the series. The series has officially concluded according to its creator, and it's by far one of the best web series I've seen in a very long time. One thing that interests me about the series a lot is that, especially with hindsight, so many little things in previous versions of the house game that you likely overlooked start to sound like cries for help, some sort of clue that something was very wrong. A really good example of a part of the series that was mostly overlooked, that sounds way worse with hindsight, is is a phrase that Ozalog says in My House Place version 2, when he sees the dialogue NPC of Brandon's avatar outside of his house for the first time, and says, Well, at least I get to hang out with Brandon in NPC form. Another thing I really like about the series, more so about how it was made, is its attention to detail on replicating old Roblox. Just
Just about every aspect of the series could have occurred during the original time frames that the story took place in, and the Roblox community at large probably would have not batted an eye. From the mention of long forgotten trends, down to the way people would talk in game 14 years ago. If you have any of your own theories or have anything to add that I could have missed, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.